Hi, welcome to the studio. Um, today we're in the printmaking lab and we're going to go ahead and talk about how to create um, what's called a dry point. So uh, what we're going to use for our matrix, or in other words, the surface we're going to use today, is going to be a sheet of plexi. So I want to take you through each step and uh, we're going to start at the very beginning. So right here we have a sheet of Reeves BFK paper. I have um, a tear bar. So the way you use a tear bar is you can make a, a little indentation in your paper, just like so, to kind of give you a little crease mark. Lay the tear bar right over the top of your paper. Use a fair amount of pressure. Keep that tear bar in place, and then you're going to grab the corner and rip. So most printmakers like the ripped edge to the paper. Very rarely do you see a case um, with a mature print, printmaker where it's been scissored, for example. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to go ahead and we'll print on a quarter sheet. One thing that I find students do quite often is they uh, will make the mistake of not sizing paper large enough and um, they'll try to save themselves a little bit of money and they'll print um, on a little bit smaller sheet of paper. Uh, you want to make sure you have several inches around your, your print for a couple reasons. A, it will catch the ink from transferring onto the blankets when you get to the press and uh, it also makes it much easier to present and frame and most importantly, aesthetically, it just looks a whole lot better um, having that um, extra space around your print. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this in a, in a tray. This is just a tray with regular old water in it. And I'm going to let that paper soak. Um, and you can really let that paper soak anywhere from like 15 minutes to 2 hours. You start getting beyond, say, the 2 hour time frame. You're going to start to lose a little bit of sizing outside of your paper. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you really don't want to leave it in there uh, for too long, but um, you can always take it out and reuse it too. But I suggest try to have it out uh, you know, within the two hour time frame. Sometimes I'll just tear a couple of sheets up, leave them in there, get them ready. Now if you're in a printmaking scenario with a lot of other students, a lot of other individuals, you may just want to simply write your initials on the back side of the page. Um, that way you won't get confused. Here at Pierce, we've got a large sink with several of these trays. You can put a piece of tape on these trays, write your name on it. You won't get it mixed up. Okay? So we'll return to our paper here in a moment. Let's head over to the inking station. Let's talk about how you're going to end up inking your uh, plate and preparing your plate. Okay? So let's start by uh, the very beginning. And right here I have a piece of plexi that's been sized. In this case, it's five by seven inches. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to file down the edges of these, pla of these plates so when we send them to the press, they don't rip the blankets. The blankets on our press are actually pretty expensive, so we want to do our best to preserve them so we don't have to um, order them um, again. Uh, Hopefully we get them to last a little bit of time before we have to reorder. Okay, this is just a regular old file. You can find these at a hardware store like Home Depot or whatever if you want to purchase your own. Certainly not a bad um, thing to do. Um, I find as they get clogged, you can actually use a steel brush, kind of clean out those cross uh, hatch sections here on your file and you can then have the benefit of having a nice um, file that isn't really clogged up. So the way you're going to prepare your plate is just hold it um, over the edge of a surface and rather than like hitting the plate bouncing off of it, um, sort of pecking at the plate if you will, you're going to have a lot better um, control to kind of use your finger Put it across the put it across the file, and in a long, smooth filing action, kind of leave the file down on the plate and go back and forth. And I'll just file one edge here for the sake of our demonstration today. Okay, so I'm gonna file back this edge. You're not filing it straight up and down like this. I have a lot of students think that you're filing it straight. But rather what we're doing is we want to put an angle on it 
So as that drum roller goes over the edge of the plate, it's not going to tear the blankets. So you want to put about a 45 degree angle on the edge of the plate. And again, it works a lot better if you're not going up and down on the file. Leave it down on the surface. If you want to just go ahead on the corners too, and just nip the corners a little bit, that works pretty well too. Um, I can't tell you the technical name of this tool. I call it a pipe cleaner. Then it makes me think of making little crafts with kids. <laughs> I don't actually know if it's called a pipe cleaner. But I know it's a plumbing tool that's used to clean pipes, obviously, in the, the seams or something like that. What we use it for in printmaking is um, I like to press it up, the plate up against my body, against my chest here. Then you kind of hold this uh, area here that, that rotates with your finger. So you have the blade placed up against that groove that we've just made. And if you score it a couple times, what you're going to find is you're going to get a really nice smooth edge. And the reason that's important is if you don't score that edge properly, if you don't score that edge properly, you're going to get little crevices of ink in there. Then when you go to print your, your plate, it's going to be a little bit dirty. Um, so just scoring it a couple times with this plumbing uh, tool here actually creates a really nice edge. Okay? Um, the tool that most printmakers use to create a dry point, which is what we're doing today, um, is an etching tool. Here you can see I've got one that a student has wrapped tape around to give them a little bit more grip. You can also get cork. And, and stick cork through it if you have a hard time gripping something like this. Um, if you're looking at them from a store, they come in something like this uh, kind of shape. And the nice thing about this particular etching needle is on the back side it has a burnishing tool. So if you happen to have an edge on your plate, you scratched in a shape that you didn't necessarily like, you can use that burnishing tool to try to smooth it down. Now you're not going to eliminate the line entirely, but what it will do is it will minimize the amount of ink. It'll make it a little bit lighter. So that's what this end is used for. It also has another sharp end that you can use to scratch into the plate. But it's not nearly as effective as the other point, the needle, the etching needle side. So quite often I'll have students create a sketch. Um, so if this was their finished sketch, they would lay this down. They would then take their plate over the top of their sketch and use the sharp needle side here and scratch their design into their plate. Um, what works best in this case is using hatch marks and cross hatching marks. Um, and if you look at uh, great printmakers like Rembrandt, Picasso, so on, they were masters of using the hatch mark, uh, the cross hatch mark, and with those uh, at your fingertips, you can create a whole world inside these plexi plates to print with. What we're doing is we're creating a valley that actually gets broken down. It will hold ink for a little while. If we were to do this in copper or zinc, like the old artists, and in addition to etching them, we could actually make our valleys or the areas that hold the ink a little bit deeper. Um, what we're doing is we're just doing a really quick version of a plexi cut, um, um, dry point print rather. So we can probably get maybe an addition of 15 prints or so, depending upon how much pressure you use, before it starts to break down. So your first 15 or so prints are going to look really good, and then unless you come back in and re scratch your surface, it's going to start getting gradually lighter. You can probably get an addition of say 30 prints or something, maybe out of a plate, um, but in all honesty, very few students have a desire to, to, to make a larger addition. So this works great if you're after a fairly small addition of prints. So you need to remember to come up with a design. Keep in mind if you're working from a sketch under the plexiglass that when you go to print that, it's going to be printed in reverse. 
So those of you that want to use lettering, for example, um, if you spell your name on there, you take it through the printing process, you're going to be a little disappointed when you find out that it's printed backwards. Okay, so keep in mind anytime you use text, it's actually going to reverse that image. So make sure that it's completely uh, backwards. You can, you can certainly do something like that on Photoshop. If you want to take your sketch, scan it in, reverse it, you'll be good to go. But keep in mind, whatever you're printing is going to be backwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one of my students' prints. This is Stephanie's plexiglass 8x10. So she's gone through the work of filing down the edges. She has scratched in her desired image here. Okay, um, so this plate is ready to go. So let's talk about what the next step is, and that's inking this plate. So what the next step is going to be um, is to charge up some ink. So what I have here is graphic chemical ink. Um, it's really nice. This is a bone black etching ink. It's oil based. Um, so it's not water soluble, meaning the nice thing is you can soak paper um, like we're doing over here. And if you printed something on it, the ink's not going to be removed. So that's a huge advantage if you want to do a multiple um, plate or multiple color uh, printmaking process. Um, in addition to that, I'm using a little bit of Easy Wipe, and I really like these caulking guns um, from uh, Graphic Chemicals uh, line of inks that, that fit those. And uh, again, just a Home Depot caulking gun, and you can buy these in canisters as well as the caulking uh, size, but I really like these because they don't dry out, they last a long time. At the end of the day, I just ask my students to tape up the end of these um, nozzles and you're good to go. They're really a lot less messy, you don't have as much drying in the canister, you don't have as much waste. Okay, and uh, the reason I like the Easy Wipe, some printmakers, well, they poo-poo on it, to put it simply, but I like it because um, it's a little bit easier to wipe the plate and uh, I think it does maybe lessen the intensity of the ink to a degree, but I think the advantages are so much better. Um, I think I end up using maybe 75% ink to maybe 25% um, Easy Wipe. So you don't want to use too much Easy Wipe, but just a little bit sure makes the process better. So what I'm doing now with this ink um, don't know how clearly you can see it on the camera, but what I'm doing with this ink right now is I'm just mixing that Easy Wipe right into the bone black ink. Okay? So I'm just warming up the ink. By doing this, it becomes a lot easier to work with. All right, excellent. This ink is ready to go. Okay. Um, now the important thing you want to do is also always have some Viva paper towels with you. I wish I had stock in Viva. I don't get any kind of kickbacks from them, but boy, I sure love Viva. Um, the nice thing about Viva is it's, it's a thick paper towel. Uh, it absorbs a lot better than like a bounty paper towel or something like that. Um, you can see that it, it really picks up the ink and it doesn't doesn't break through. So I highly recommend using the Vivas. Um, in addition to the Vivas, you're going to need a pair of gloves. And I find these style of gloves work really well. A box of disposable gloves work great too. Um, the advantage here is you can take them on and off really easily as where um, uh, the other gloves are, are, are disposable. But you can see I did a really good job selecting gloves for the little video demonstration because I have two right hand gloves on. All right, well, just bear with me. Okay, pretend, <laughs> pretend I know how to dress myself. Okay, here we go. Uh, a little Michael Jackson action going on there. All right, so uh, um, got the gloves ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna grab one of these um, chips. And the chip here is just a piece of mat board that's been cut down into a small square. Our camera man today is Christian, Christian Price, and uh, he spent many a fun hours chopping these down into small pieces for us. But um, what we have um, is a really flexible um, thing that won't necessarily scrape out all those valleys on our plate. 
So what we need what we need to do is just gather a little bead of ink. It doesn't take a whole lot of ink, something kind of along those lines there. Just a little bead of ink on the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to our plate and I'll talk a little bit about the setup. Everybody develops their own little preferences when you start to become a printmaker. Um, but what I really like to do is I like to have a stack of just newspapers. The Pioneer School newspaper disappears a little bit faster around here for some reason <laughs> and than it does in other parts of the building. Okay, so what I do is I, I place the uh, plate on top of some newsprint. I'm going to end up throwing away a lot of this newsprint as we go as it gets dirty. Okay, so now I'm just spreading that ink into these valleys. And you don't need to use a lot of ink. Here's a little trick I've learned. I've learned that if you take the edge of the, uh, of the paper and fold it over like that, you can actually keep your gloves from getting really dirty. And that's another reason why I like to have a lot of um, newsprint all sliced up, ready to go. It just keeps things a lot cleaner. Okay. You might find that the first time you charge up your, your plate might take a little bit more ink. As you get a layer of plate tone or ink tone over the top of your plate, um, it takes a little less ink. Okay. Just about done here. It takes a little bit longer to ink up an 8x10 than it does a 5x7. So that's something else to consider as a student. It's a little easier to learn how to ink up on a small plate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this kind of gauzy looking stuff. This is what it looks like when it's brand new. And uh, as it starts to wear out, I usually take a new sheet like this and kind of wrap it together with an old sheet. Uh, this is called Tarleton. So we're going to use the Tarleton to um, go ahead and um, prepare our plate. So again, I'll take a little piece of newsprint fold it over here, and then I pretend I'm Mr. Miyagi, and I go in little circles, or maybe it's Danielson. So you do the wax on, wax off right here. All right, so I'm just gonna go in little circles. What I'm doing is I'm pushing that ink down into the crevices. As it gets dirty, just throw it away. Um, and if you can keep the back side of this plate to save, clean, it just saves you a little bit more work. All right, so you don't wanna use this um, for the whole process to remove all the ink. You wanna, it takes a little bit of practice to know how much pressure. You start with more pressure and as, as the ink starts to get lifted off the plate, you use less pressure. As it gets a little inked up, I might rotate the Tarleton to a clean piece, all right? And you can see, I go through a lot of newspaper in this process trying to keep things fairly clean. Okay. So again, I like to go in circles, push that ink down into the valleys. There we go. So, once the plate gets to a spot where it's about like this, okay, you can see the image, but it's still kind of messy around the edges, you end up moving to the next step, okay? The next step is taking a piece of taffeta. This is the same stuff that's used to make the lining for, say, a wedding dress, but it works great for printmaking. And some people will use newsprint, some people will use their hands. I think people that use their hands have some kind of death wish. These inks are carcinogenic. Um, that's why I recommend wearing gloves. And um, it's also why I recommend using taffeta. Plus, I think taffeta gives you like the best print finish out there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go in circles. Pull up that ink. Okay, I'm not using too much pressure. Um, 
and I'm just kind of quickly going over. And what I'm aiming for in this particular instance is a nice even plate tone. Nice little film of gray just across the top of that plate. Okay. So you can also lift it up sometimes, see if there's any kind of smudges. You have to be a little bit careful with these gloves. Sometimes the texture of the glove will leave an impression. So this looks pretty good. We're inked up. Now we're down to just another couple of little finishing tweaks. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a Viva, coil it up. This is why I really recommend having an apron. Okay. Now I'm going to push this plate up against my Manly Pecs. All right, and I'm going to take this Viva paper towel and clean these edges here. That's why the filing is really important. Uh, truth be told, this particular student didn't use that plumbing tool very well, so we might have a little bit of dirty um, ink concentration around the edges, but that's okay. So what we're doing now is we're just going to clean the edges of the plate, and that will keep our print looking nice and clean. And also at this time, this is why it's good to have lots of newspapers. You want to clean the back side of your plate. You don't want ink transferring from the back of the bed onto your paper or worse yet, onto the blankets on the printing press. Okay? So the next step would include having a template on the press and one square or rectangle being the size of your paper, the other one being the size of your print. That's what I've got going on right here. So I'm going to lay my print. And likewise, I usually take one glove off on the, at this point. I take uh, the plate, set it on the press. Remember that paper? Remember where we started a little while back with our paper? Well, we're ready for that now. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here. Okay, and now we're back over to the paper. I've got the... Uh, got the, uh, the towel. A lot of printmakers will use a blotting piece of paper. Um, when I first started out, I did. And then I was watching a video um, by, with, from, with the master printmaker, and he was using a towel. It's like, why spend all that money on blotting paper when you can just use a towel over and over again, wash it if you need to. All right, that works better than the blotting paper, I think. So I just put the paper in there. Tap up the hands a couple times, and you're good to go. And it doesn't wear out like the blotting paper does. Okay? Now, with the printmaking paper, there's no way you're going to see this on the video, but there's actually two different sizes, sides of the paper. One is the screen side. When they manufacture this paper, it lays down on a screen. So it has more of a screen texture. The other side is more of a fibrous texture. That's the side you want to paint, you want to print on. The side that has more fiber, um, sounds like a commercial for breakfast cereal. The other side um, is more of a screen side. It'll still print just fine, but you'll get a little bit better results on the side with the, with the, with the, uh, the texture on it. So let's head back over to the printing press. All right, so we're back over to the press. This is a beautiful steel bed Griffin etching press. Line up that piece of paper. Um, I have contact paper on the bed of the press. Also makes it a lot easier to clean up the ink. Um, this is another reason why I really like Viva paper towels. Um, they're sturdy enough to reuse them here. And what I do is I, use, I always have my students place uh, Viva paper towels over the top of their prints to keep any extra ink, any extra glue if you're doing chincolet from um, getting onto the blankets. So these blankets here are fairly hammered, but um, beginning printmaking class, I thought, let, let at it. Let them at it, you know, rather than putting a new set of blankets out there. You know, use these dirty guys. We've got some new ones to be going on here soon. All right, so here we go. Now we'll just uh, come over to the crank on the, uh, the printing press, run our plate through. All right, just felt the plate go through as the pressure increased. There, the bed, the press dropped, so we should have adequate pressure on here. Go ahead and lift up our blankets. Um, you can reuse these Viva paper towels right here. See what kind of impression we got? It's a little light. 
It's a little light, but it's a first. It's a, the first pass. So as we print this again, we'll get a little bit darker. Perhaps I overwiped just a hair in this section, but I think it's mainly because uh, um, it's a first pass here, and we'll get a little bit darker. So that's the finished result. All right, that's how you can achieve a dry point off of a sheet of plexiglass. So thanks for joining me for that lecture, and uh, look forward to the work you're going to create. All right, roll out. <laughs>